Hi everyone. If you're a parent, you might have visited a doctor at least once to get your child's ear checked. Because in children, ear infection are one of the most common reasons parents visit ENT clinics worldwide. How do these infections happen? What are the reasons behind ear infections and how would they manifest in your child? This is what I'll be discussing with you, so stay till the end to learn not only how you can treat it, but also how to prevent it from happening in the first place. Now I mentioned ear infection is pretty common, but what causes this ear infection and why is it so common in children? Let me start by explaining to you what is inside the ear. We divide the ear into three parts for easy understanding outer, middle and inner parts. The outer ear is made up of pinna, also called the auricle, and the ear canal. The pinna is the part of the ear you see on the side of your head. It's made of tough cartilage covered by skin. Its main job is to gather sounds and funnel them to the ear canal, which is the second part of the outer ear. And this canal leads to the middle ear. Sometimes, due to excess moisture in the canal, for example, after swimming or a physical damage to the canal, like from scratching or cleaning with earbuds, the outer ear can get infected. And we call this otitis externa or swimmer's ear. The second part of the ear is called the middle ear. Most ear infection in children happen in the middle ear. The middle ear is actually an air-filled cavity that turns sound waves into vibrations and delivers them into the inner ear. The middle ear is separated from the outer ear by the eardrum or the tympanic membrane, which is actually a thin piece of tissue stretched tight across the ear canal. Sounds enter the ear canal and hits the eardrum, making it move. And this movement leads to vibrations of three very small bones in the middle ear, known as the ossicles. Now to hear properly, the pressure on both sides of your eardrum must be equal. And whenever you go on a flight, the air pressure changes and you may feel a popping sensation as your ears adjust to the pressure. This adjustment happens due to a narrow tube inside the middle ear called the eustachian tube that connects the middle ear all the way to the back of the throat and this helps to drain mucus from the ear. A cold throat infection, acid reflux or allergies can make the eustachian tube swell and this blocks the mucus from draining. Now the viruses or bacteria start growing in that mucus making pus which builds up in the middle ear and we call this otitis media. Another reason why children, especially two to four year old, get frequent ear infection is because of large structures behind the nose called the adenoids, which can actually block the function of the eustachian tube. Now, let's talk about how would you know if your child has an ear infection? Well, for that, you gotta look for the signs. Ear infection comes with obvious ear pain with fever. Your child may become irritable, unable to sleep, and might even lose his appetite. Now your seven or eight year old might tell you about the pain, but what about your babies? They may pull off on the ears, cry excessively, and become more irritable. In a severe case of ear infection, there could be difficulty in hearing, so children might develop problems in concentrating or responding to the sound. And in some cases, you might also see a discharge fluid coming out of the ear. This usually happens when an infection causes too much fluid to collect in the ear. Excess fluid will put pressure on the eardrum eventually causing a hole to let the fluid drain through this hole. And sometimes your child might need to go for an operation to put a tiny tube called the grommet tube to help drain that pus from that hole. Throat infections are one of the main reasons for ear infections in children, but there are also other causes alongside throat infections. Anything that blocks the eustachian tube can cause ear infections. Now, there are certain allergies that cause inflammation of the nasal passages and eustachian tube as well. 
Another reason for ear infections can be exposing your child to cigarette smoke. Smoke can irritate the nasal passages and cause inflammation. An important yet not very well known cause of ear infection in babies is bottle feeding. Feeding your baby in a lying down position can cause the milk to flow into the eustachian tube and from there down to the middle ear. So it is always best to feed your baby in a slightly sitting or we call it a propped up position. This not only helps with effective feeding but also prevents unnecessary ear infections. Now we adults develop ear infections sometimes but you might be wondering why ear infections are so common in children. In the next video, we will crack that mystery and I'll be sharing with you some tips on how to deal with your child's ear infection. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon for more such content.